Last week, it was the rushing attack that starred for the Chargers offense, but this week, we're hoping that the Chargers wide receivers and passing attack can feast on a banged-up Tennessee secondary. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogemeyer, and we've been covering the Chargers together now for eight seasons, but this is our sixth year as the host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you guys, as always, for making us your first listen today, and to make sure you never miss the show, go subscribe or follow for free on the Locked On Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. David, what do we got today? Daniel, after after a devastating loss here in week one, the Chargers move on to week two, and so that means we're getting into the keys. Keys for success on offense, on defense, and then we finish things up with our bowl predictions and game predictions. Yeah, it feels like a big win, or a big game, right? It like, yes. feels like the Chargers need a win going into this one. And we were talking about, can you say it's must win? It feels like as much of a must win as a week two game could be, but... This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. All right, David, let's get to our keys for success. And for me, it starts with something you guys talked a little bit about yesterday with Tyler Roland of uh, you know Locked On Titans, and it, we saw the Chargers wide receivers be a little bit quiet in Week One, and it was game plan related, right? The Chargers went out to try to exploit Vic Fangio's defense that's soft yeah. against the run, and they did that. They very did. effectively right <laughs> yeah but that led to a you know a, a smaller game from justin herbert less from the wide receivers this week it should flip and, and that's the game plan we're looking for for the chargers hey maybe don't bang your head you're not, you're not going to run it 40 times against this titans defense which is much better in run defense than they are in pass defense and there's a couple of guys that are banged up going into this game like we talked about yesterday amani hooker likely out he said Mike Vrabel is not going to play a guy who's in a concussion protocol. Chargers kind of have the same thing. Their other starting corner, Christian Fulton, limited with a hamstring. So at least you're missing one of your starters in the secondary, and one of them's a little bit banged up for a unit that let Derek Carr average 9.2 yards per attempt last week, right? So that has to be where it starts for this Chargers offense. That's where the biggest mismatch is. That's where they should attack. 100%. It's test the secondary. Kevin Byard, four receptions on six targets, 43 yards. Christian Fulton, three receptions on, on four targets, 70 yards and a touchdown. Sean Murphy Bunting, who got beat on a nasty double move, three receptions on four targets, 39 yards and a touchdown. So this secondary is definitely very susceptible to the deep pass. Uh, I think I'm sure a lot of you saw the clip from, of Derek Carr going up to Shahid and saying, hey, go deep, go run as far as you can. Yeah. And they basically did, and they put that game away. I think that you see just you see uh, Derek Carr doing that, and then you see Justin Herbert with the weapons that he has. Uh, it should be a field day for the Chargers uh, through the air. Justin Herbert and those receivers should have a lot of fun on Sunday. It'll be interesting, probably different looking too, because the one place that they exploited this secondary was the deep part of the field, right? And the Chargers obviously not known for their speed offensively. Do we see Quentin Johnston more involved? Someone who can stretch the field a little bit. Did we see Mike Williams get some one-on-one -on -one chances yeah. down the field like he did to win the game last year in the end of the game, right? So I think that's obviously where you start. Gerald Everett, I'd like to see him more involved in the passing game. More on him later, because I think he also has a really good matchup. But I also want to see Justin Herbert kind of light things up a little bit, right? Yeah. Pretty pedestrian production game in week one against the Dolphins, right? A little over 200 yards. Nothing that's going to be super flashy. Average yards per attempt. A lot of screen passes, right? Yeah. A lot of throws behind the line of scrimmage. Hopefully this week we see them pushing the ball a little bit more down the field and testing this team. Then again, last year this was the team they played against that Justin Herbert basically threw it out of the end zone. A DB jumped out of bounds, threw it back to another defender for an interception at the end of the first half of that game. That was nuts. You had but to bring that up, didn't you, Dan? I, <laughs> I do. I mean, it was insane. That. That, when people talk about Justin Herbert's interceptions, I think about plays like that. You know You're right. I mean? Where it's yeah. like, okay, well, if you saw all the interceptions, you might feel differently. But yeah. this is from Junie Riddle that covers the Charger, or covers the Titans. He said, without Christian Fulton and Imani Hooker last year, the Titans defense led up an average of 70 more passing yards a game and went from allowing 19 points per game to 22 points per game. So Fulton probably going to play. He's been limited all week. We'll see. 
still, I mean, this is one where these guys obviously limited. You're missing one of those guys. They have a good matchup. And last year, the Chargers had a good matchup there, too. They didn't exploit it. This year, it has to happen. And it has to happen quick, David. And I think that's a huge key to this. It, uh, it does have to happen quick because I want the Chargers to play with a lead. I think that's really, really important in this game because if you're able to get on, get a lead and, and you're going to be able to take the Titans out of their game plan, the, the Titans are going to want to run the football, impose their will. I mean, really, when they're able to run the football, they're moving the ball down the field. When they're throwing the ball, they're not moving the ball down the field. So yeah. you want to force them to throw the ball as much as possible. You do that by getting a lead on them and taking the ability to run the football completely away from them. That is very, very important in this game. Another one of my keys, Daniel, is run for show play action for doe so i think in the first game the chargers were you know they, they played this season they were able to establish the running game they ran for over 200 yards i think now is the time in this game to benefit from those running plays set up those running plays early on and then play action off of some of those same looks that you showed not only uh, in week one but early in this football game and i think they'll have a lot of success uh, doing some play action off of the those run those running plays that they established early on. Yeah, I mean the studies about you know play action, how much it helps you in the passing game, or how well you're running the ball. Because the thing is, is if you have to run the ball effectively to set up good play action, it's going to be a really tough game to do it because the Titans have a really really good run defense, and that's one of the keys I have. Is just I saw you do it last week against a good or not a good run defense against the Dolphins, right? I mean. Hard to say because we only saw them against the Chargers to put up 234 yards on them. But I want to see what they can do against a legitimately good run defense. And the yeah. kind of thing that sticks out here, the biggest wild card, is so probably not going to have Austin Eckler, right? Which makes it even that much more of a test. If you didn't see the interview earlier this week, we had Austin Eckler on who kind of let it slip that he had an ankle sprain, which is probably the best case scenario. Better than a it broken is. ankle for sure. Yeah. I can tell you that with you know, without much... You know, I don't think any any anyone's going to be coming back about that. But Joshua Kelly, can he do it against this team, right? Can, can they run the ball? Will the scheme be enough to overcome going up against what's not a good matchup for them, right? Like, the Titans haven't allowed a 70-yard rusher since week one of 2022. It was the last <laughs> wow. time they let one guy run for 70 yards against them. I, I do think... think I, good. I was just going to say, I think this might be a good game for Isaiah Spiller to get involved, too. I just think he's a little bit more of a bigger back. He's a guy that is really good in between the tackles. I think that maybe, hopefully, we get to see some of him in this game as well. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting, though. I, I don't know. I mean, I think you could probably make the argument that Josh Kelly and Elijah Dotson both run harder and more physical than Isaiah Spiller. I don't know. I mean, I, that's kind of how I feel about it. I feel like Isaiah Spiller is more elusive than those guys, potentially. But the other part of it is... We heard Brandon Staley say that there's still a battle for RB3. If it goes yeah. like it did last week and they're only using two running backs, how much does Isaiah Spiller get in the game? That's another big part of this game for me. So yeah. I think that's all really kind of where it's at. It'll be really interesting. We all hyped up the running game after week one. Let's see it against a better, more formidable op opponent. Let's see it yeah. against you know Jeffrey Simmons. Let's see it against a more physical front yeah. and going up in Tennessee this week and on the road, right? That makes a difference yeah. as well. Early game. 1 o'clock Eastern time game for this one, 10 a.m. Pacific. At least we'll know the result early of this one. But I think the big thing for this is, like, offensively, you don't want to get in a slugfest with a Mike Vrabel team. You know, no. you don't want to let them drag you into the mud. You don't want to get off to a slow start and just be inefficient offensively. Even without Austin Eckler, you have plenty of pieces to get yeah. what you need done. You can do it quick. You just don't want to be in a bar fight against no. Mike Vrabel. You just don't. And you shouldn't. You should be able to... If you play your cards right, run up the score against a yeah. really banged up secondary. Like, I think they're going to bring it. They're hungry, too. But I think this is one where we have to see it and we want to see it early. And I think that'll make a big difference in who ends up winning this game. But we do want to get into our defensive keys as well because we do have a lot, even besides just stopping Derrick Henry. Because like we heard yesterday from Tyler Rowland, it's not all Derrick Henry for the Titans anymore. They have more pieces besides that. And they're going to have to do a lot more things, including getting a bounce back game for their secondary and potentially making it work defensively and looking better, even though a couple of starters could be missing this game. So we're going to get into that coming up right after this. First, though, I do need to tell you guys about the Game Time app because buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. 
Game time is the fast and easiest way to buy your tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Game time is the place for last-minute ticket deals. You're not going to find a better place for it, and I'm going to tell you why. The game time guarantee means you will always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. There's literally no downside to it. You will not find a cheaper ticket. And that's why it's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code Lockdown NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Go find the event. There's plenty of events. San Diego, LA. I've been looking. I'm on game time all the time looking for some last minute come ups. But terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Lockdown NFL. You will get $20 off your ticket. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, David, we talked about our offensive keys for success, but one of the keys for you guys is we should be checking out the NFL kickoff live show every Friday on Locked On. They will go 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern on every Locked On NFL YouTube channel with Tanitra Batiste, Jarvis Davis, and Kyle Krabs breaking down every game on the NFL slate, so make sure you guys check that out. But, David, looking at the defense, we know the defense needs a bounce back week. We talked about it. You know, you guys talked about it on yesterday's show. Can't have much of a more disappointing performance, but... A much different, much less dynamic offense they're going up against this week. What do you want to see from the Chargers defense? Yeah, I mean, like I kind of alluded to a little bit in the first segment, I mean, the the Tennessee Titans offense, they go as the running game goes. They're kind of built to run the football with their offensive line, the way that they block, with their running backs, the way they run. Obviously, you got King Henry, but now it's not just King Henry you have to worry about. And I think I like to call this combo kind of smash and dash. It's King Henry and Tajay Spears that you have to worry about as well. I think with with Henry, he had 15 carries for 63 yards, 4.2 yards per carry. Tajay Spears only had three carries for 27 yards, but I expect him to get a lot more touches in this game to get a lot more involved. I think the Titans have to lean into their strength, and that is to run the football. And so the Chargers need to be ready for that. They need to sell out to stop the run. They have to make sure to get 11 hats to the football. It's what it's going to take. I mean, King Henry eats uh, eats tacklers for lunch. So you have to make sure to get that guy on the ground. No ankle tackles, that's not going to work. You're going to have to drive through, drive him into the ground and stop him completely. Yeah, we talked about it before, like, there's a reason this last week we haven't been hyping up the Chargers run defense, right? And it's because we got to see it against a team who didn't need to run the ball at all to have success. Like the right. Titans need to run the ball to have success. Yes, they do they have do. a new offensive coordinator like Tyler Rowan talked about. So it's not as, you know, Derrick Henry heavy as we've seen. But Tajay Spears, I mean, if you watch that USC two lane game last year, I mean, you know how dynamic that dude was. A guy we broke down in our draft profiles as well, you know, as a guy. That could make sense. A dynamic player who outsnapped Derrick Henry last week, which is yeah. wild to see. Uh, you know, maybe a changing of the guard in Tennessee a little bit. But last week, Chargers allowed 70 yards at three and a half yards per carry. That's great. Take out the kneel downs. It's still four yards per carry, which is a whole almost one and a half yards per carry better than their season average last year, which is still good. You just don't get to brag about it when you give it 466 passes. At all. Right? Yeah. This is the thing. We talked about getting off to a fast start, right, and, and why you want to do that and the benefits there. I think the same kind of thing applies here. When you looked at the game that the Broncos played last week against the Raiders, where a lot of yeah. people said, hey, Broncos offense looked a lot better. The problem was the Broncos offense had six offensive possessions in that game, right? Like, they, the Raiders shrunk the game on them and made it a game that had such small margins that yeah. a low score could go win it. If this yeah. is a low-scoring game. It's because the Titans are probably running the ball well. So yeah. I think – For this game, you want to get Justin Herbert as many cracks at this defense as you possibly can. You want to get the ball in his hands as many times as you possibly can. If you let them run all over you, right, after talking about how much better the run defense is going to be, it's just not going to happen that way. Like, the game flow totally changes. So I think that's huge in this game, obviously, besides the main thing of just Derrick Henry's a monster. If you let him get going, the game is probably over for you. We talked about gang tackling yesterday. That's going to be a huge part of it, right? To me, with Derrick Henry, it's always about this. Make him stop his feet in the backfield. Yes. Don't let the train get rolling. No. Make him shuffle. Make him make moves in the backfield. If you let That's him get a point. full head of steam at 220 and six foot three, good luck. Yeah, just I mean, look at, just look at the screen pass. Game. Look at the screen pass he had against the Saints. That's all you need to see. You get him he a head a 70 of steam. He had a 70-yard touchdown he, in four straight he seasons. He takes too. off. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. We the dude pulls away from defensive backs. I mean, he's he's an actual freak. He's a freak. Yeah. Uh, I think the other big thing here, David, too, is you might have to get it done without some starters, right? Joey Bosa and Eric Hendricks have not practiced at all this week. The Chargers had two non-injury designations this week. One was on Austin Eckler, who we know is hurt. And when asked about Eric Hendricks, Brandon Staley said, same as Joey Bosa. And we know Joey Bosa's hurt. He came up limping in the game last week. Hard to say with Eric Hendricks, but historically the Chargers don't play if they don't practice all week. That's just yeah. not how they play it, right? Like, So to me, you have plenty without them, David. And there's no excuses. He might be Nick Neiman lining up next to Kenneth Murray, who we all know, right? Didn't get off to a great start. You haven't had Chris Rump so far this year. He's been limited this week. Who knows there? Probably, you know, a lot of Tui Tui below to this week, but you have plenty. Uh, there's no yeah. excuse, and you have to get it done even if you're missing some starters. I'm excited to see Tuli in this one. I, I think Tuli has a, a has, he has a lot of skills, man. I, I think he has the ability to get off of blocks on the edge and really be plays helpful. a pretty physical edge too. Yeah, play, and be helpful in run support. And and I think the more opportunities he gets to rush the passer, the more effective that he's going to be because I feel Great. like he has the ability. Uh, he just needs the snaps. And uh, the pass rush has to be better, right? Like, right. Oh, Brian that's Tano the next has thing. to. Brian Tano has to hit the ground in this game. hundred percent. That's the next thing. And and the Chargers should have a very good opportunity against Ryan Tannehill because Tannehill loves to hold on to the football. He does not get rid of the ball quickly. He's a guy that's really going to search and search and see if somebody's open. So yeah. the pass rush has to get home. They have to get him on the ground, and they should. They should have plenty of opportunities to get him on the ground in this football game. It's imperative that they do so. Yeah. Charge had no sacks against the Dolphins. Everyone knows that, right? And I think a, a big part of that will be the secondary just being much more connected, right? Like if yeah. the secondary is more connected, it, they, they don't have the personnel to run the offense that Miami ran last week, right? Not but at like all. what they do have is the running ability to suck your linebackers up a little bit, right? And have them playing closer to the line of scrimmage, get those safeties creeping up, and then yeah. big plays can happen. Like Traylon Burks, we remember scouting him. The dude is dangerous with the ball in his hands. Like is. They, they, if you let them have easy stuff, it can snowball quickly, right? As we saw yeah. last week against the Dolphins, even though it looked different. So I think, you know, cutting out those big plays is going to be huge, right? Secondary has to bounce back. This is from Jeff Miller of LA Times. Each Chargers cornerback gave up a 28-plus yard completion last week against the Dolphins, which is great. Uh, if you didn't see, Daniel Popper had a great article kind of illustrating some of the kind of busted coverages from the Chargers last week. And Eric Kendricks talked about it after the game where he said, hey, you got to play on a string. And, and what that means is just basically everyone has to be connected. Everyone has to be on the same page because when you're not, it can turn ugly. And, and yeah. as Daniel Popper put, it could have been worse last week. They missed yeah. plays. Two of left plays on the field last week. And so I think that's a big part of this one. Unlike the Dolphins, though, Daniel, I think this is a team that you can play a little bit more man coverage against. I think because well, we don't think receivers... DeAndre Hopkins is going to play, right? That right. I mean, he hasn't practiced all week. He got hurt last week. I mean, that that's a big part of it. I mean, yeah. you have to do better. If, if DeAndre Hopkins does play, you better have a better game plan against him than you did against Tyreek Hill, right? Obviously. Yeah, for sure. Different. But these 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 wide receivers for the Titans they don't separate as as well as any of the receivers on the Dolphins <laughs> yeah. do. So you should be able to play a little more physical. You need to get your hands on them, stop their momentum, stop the timing of their routes, and really make Ryan Tannehill make a good throw. And I don't feel like you know if they're in that situation, he's going to be able to do that because he didn't illustrate he was able to do it in, in the first game and really hasn't been able to do it on a consistent basis in a long time. My last one here is get off the field on third down. You oh. absolutely have to get off the field on third down. The Chargers struggled to get off the field on third and long, which is the most frustrating thing in the world to watch. They have to improve that. And that has another byproduct addition, and that's getting Darius Davis more opportunities to affect the game on special teams. Yeah, He had one punt return opportunity against the Dolphins. That is not going to cut it in this game. He should have five or six opportunities to return the football and make something happen, get some of those hidden yards that we love to see in the special teams game. Yeah, I mean, I picked Darius Davis to have a punt return touchdown last week. You know, he got one shot at it, right? That's That sucks. And if, for those keeping track at home, the Chargers have forced exactly one punt in the last six quarters that they've played football going back to the playoff game. So it, it's huge. It's imperative. Uh, I mean, you – you have to be able to get off the field, especially in those long situations. I mean, that was a problem last year, and you're starting off this year, and it was a big problem in week one. All because of, you know, guys not being connected, guys not doing what they're supposed to, in the pass rush, not getting home, and you just can't afford to have that this week. But 
even though it feels like the Chargers have a chance to kind of run away with this one a little bit, it feels like they should be trying to run up the score in this game. Game flow is going to dictate a lot of it, and with the Titans, it always turns in to a close game. So coming up after this, we're going to get into our bold and game predictions. I think Gerald Everett is in for a big one. I'll tell you why coming up right after this. First, though, I do need to tell you guys that this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Do you ever find that just as you're trying to fall asleep, your brain suddenly won't stop talking? Do your thoughts start racing right before bed or at other inopportune moments? Yes, all the time. I mean, God, leave me alone with myself. And I mean, I'm doing a podcast for myself in my head, right? Like it's one of the things that therapy has helped me the most with, right? And it turns out one great way to make those racing thoughts go away is to talk them through. Therapy gives you a place to do that so you can get out of your negative thought cycles and find some mental and emotional peace. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Best thing about BetterHelp is they're so convenient. They work on your schedule. They will get you the right choice. You can switch therapists at any time. You can find the right fit for you, which is huge. And all you have to do is find fill out a brief questionnaire to get it done. And then you're saving gas money. You're making it work on your schedule. And just having someone to help you ease that burden a little bit can make such a big difference. So get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. I also need to tell you guys about prize picks. My favorite way to play daily fantasy football really changed the game for me. I really love the format of prize picks. And I love how easy it is. I've talked about before. I've woken up at like 956 and been able to get some in on prize picks and put, pick some projections that I like. But prize picks is the most fun I've had. And you can win up to 25 times your money this football season. All you have to do is select two or more players pick more or less than on their projected stats, and then place your entry. Testing my skills on prize picks this football season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports, and if you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. My favorite part about prize picks is that unlike other daily fantasy sites that I've used in the past with prize picks, it's just me versus the projections. I'm not playing some betting shark right on the other side of things. It's just me versus the projections. I can pick up the matchups I like, and that's what I love about it. This week, you can go Justin Herbert more than or less than 287 and a half passing yards, or Jalen Waddle more than that Jalen Waddle. Or you can go with DeAndre Hopkins if he plays. You can go with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams more than or less than on their receiving projections. And all you have to do is go to prizepicks.com slash LockdownNFL and use the promo code LockdownNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash LockdownNFL with the promo code LockdownNFL for a deposit match up to $100. Daily Fantasy Sports made easy. All right, David, well, now it's time to put our money where our mouths are, as they say, because we have to make some predictions about this game. And I want to start with our bold predictions, and I'm going to start things off offensively. But I do need to tell you guys to make sure you're here with us on Sunday for our post-game recap, coming off the best post-game recap we've ever done, over 12,000 views. Thank you to the everydayers out there who always show up, good or bad, win or lose. It means a lot to us. But here every day, part of Locked On Podcast Network, so make sure you guys are here on Sunday for the post-game show, which will probably come a little early since the game will be a little earlier. The better they do, the earlier the show will come out. But, Dave, let's get into our offensive bowl predictions. I'm going to start here. I teased it a little bit, and I have a guy that I think is going to go off. And you took Keenan Allen for me last week, so I'm not going to let that slip again <laughs> this week. So, my offensive bowl prediction this week, Gerald Everett, seven catches, 90 yards, two touchdowns. The Titans it. allowed... The most yards to tight ends in 2022. Obviously, we don't have much of a sample size for 2023, but a lot of the same guys defensively with a few, you know, a few different pieces there still. They were not good against tight ends last year. Gerald Everett had a quiet week in week one. They also allowed the third most receptions to tight ends last week. So I think he is in for a big one. Seven catches, 90 yards, two tutties. It's either going to be Gerald Everett, two touchdowns, or one each for Gerald Ever and Donna Parham. I can't decide what it's going to be, but I think it's going to be one of those things. Who do you got? I like that a lot just because the, the Titans, they gave up 109 yards after the catch against the Saints in week Woof. one. And Gerald Everett, he Quentin Johnston game excels. Maybe yeah. yeah, exactly. They both excel in that yards after catch situation. So I love that pick. For me, I'm going with Justin Herbert, and it is 380 passing yards, four touchdowns, okay. and he's going to complete passes at five at five passes to at least five different receivers in this ball game. Definitely could see that. I mean, Herbert's never had a, you know, problem. I mean, how many did he do last week? He, at least one to Palmer, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, 
Josh Kelly, Quentin Johnson all had one. Yeah, I mean, he, he definitely can spread it around. I could see that happening for sure. So I picked him last week. Game plan wasn't set up for that this week. We're expecting to see a much different game plan from Kellen Moore, and that'll be exciting too, right? Seeing Kellen Moore kind of switch things up, yeah. adapt the game plan, see kind of now with two game sample size how see he kind the of changes kind of sphere, things up. Right? Yeah. yeah, especially against two kind of polar opposite teams. So I'm going defensive bowl prediction here. I'm going Khalil Mack, two sacks. I'm hoping for a bounce back week from this Chargers pass rush, but also two forced fumbles. I, I almost came true with my defensive ball prediction last week. I had less than 60 rushing yards and two interceptions, and I think it ended up being 70 rushing yards and then two total turnovers. Getting close, but Ryan Tannehill does have 75 career fumbles. Seems like a Ooh. lot. I mean, he's been playing for a long time. He's been a little bit better. But I also saw Quill Mack straight up snatch the ball out of Drake London's hands like he was a little boy. He sure so did. I'm not going to put it past <laughs> Quill Mack to get two forced fumbles and two sacks in this game. That's where I'm going defensively. Yeah, for for me, defensively, is more of a, a general bold prediction. Sure. But I have the Chargers picking off Tannehill twice and okay. sacking him five times in this game. Oh, I think nice. the, the pass rush is really going to come alive. Even without Bosa, have, potentially, huh? Yeah, even without Bosa, uh, uh, because, especially because interior uh, of the Titans' offensive line is a little bit weaker. Maybe and Morgan I think Fox. Morgan game. Fox is going to have some opportunities to really win on the inside. But overall, two interceptions, five sacks. Of Tannehill, I think the Chargers defense, they come alive like we all need them to. Yeah, maybe honestly, like we see more, you know, Khalil Mack or even Bo said he plays next on the inside, right? Something yeah. we always clamor for, especially when you get these weak matchups. You get your best rushers, no you know, offense to Morgan Fox, who would be right there next to them, right? But sure. like getting your best rushers on the inside with a straight path to the quarterback, we know Absolutely. they can both do it like to see that a little bit more Thule also has a lot of experience rushing on the inside and I he mean does. he's a dude that came in as kind of a tweener right so very interesting David you made your predictions yesterday on the crossover episode but remind the people where you ended up going with and why you think it's going to go down that way yeah so uh, I I picked the Chargers to win in this one and I picked him to win big and and it's because I feel like the that Justin Herbert has a great matchup going up against this secondary. Like I said before, I think he is going to absolutely light it up. I think the they're going to get a lead, and they're going to be able to take away the running game away from the Titans, and they're going to force Tannehill to throw the ball a lot more than the Titans want him to, and that's going to lead to more interceptions and more pressure on the quarterback, which is going to turn into more turnovers. So I have the Chargers winning 34-21, to 21, getting back in the win column for the first time in about 10 months. I, I appreciate the fact that you're willing to get back on the horse after picking a double-digit win last week and then going back. I mean, I think there's obviously a much better chance for it this week. I mean, if the Chargers hit their peak offensively, I mean, it feels like they could run up the score here. And that's going to be interesting because the Chargers have had great matchups before and not been able to exploit them, whether it's going up against bad run defenses, whether that's it's fair. going up against bad secondaries. I mean, I remember having this conversation about the Titans secondary last year. Yeah, Chargers didn't take advantage. It was a slugfest. No. It was a street fight. They got dragged yeah, into the mud. Let's see what the Kellen Moore effect is, right? Yeah, and I just don't. Let's not leave this game up to Justin Herbert fourth no. quarter heroics. Like we know no. he could do it. It didn't happen last week. I'd still he's going to get the ball again at some point this season. I'm still going to feel like he's going to go get it done. Yeah, I have it a little closer. My prediction is Chargers. 33, which I'm hesitant to do because I just I, I don't know if this game is going to get shortened. I don't know how many possessions are going to happen. I'm going Chargers 33, Titans 27. So I have a much closer game this week. Man, I mean, Mike Vrabel's a good coach. The Titans are just as hungry to not go 0-2, right? Like, they don't want to be that either. They're yeah. gonna, and the Chargers are going to get going up against the, uh, the Vikings next week. are going to be hungry not to go 0-3, right? So it's like it's not going to get easier. The Chargers need to get this done. Yeah, I don't fully trust, trust the Chargers' defense. I just trust their offense so much after one week. For the sanity of the fan base, please get the W. <laughs> for real, man. I mean, for all of us. To let us all sleep a little easier at night. I think the Chargers get it done. I truly yeah. do. We're never going to come in here and, and give you an, an unauthentic pick. We're never going to pick the Chargers just because, like, I no. truly think the Chargers are going to get it done. I had them, I think, pulling off a three-point win last week. I thought it was going to be close. I ended up losing. You're a lot more week. correct than me. I, there's only correct or incorrect, man. We were yep. both wrong in the, in the Dolphins shred of the Chargers. But I have the Chargers bouncing back and getting a big win. They need it. No excuses. I don't care who's missing in this game. Even if all the guys in the injury report don't play, you have plenty. Get to it go done. beat this Titans team. Go make it a blowout. For I mean, do it. Please leave them yeah. in the dust. You have the opportunity to do it. But that's going to wrap things up for today's show. Hopefully, you will see us back here for a live show on Sunday afternoon. 
talking about a big Chargers win. To make sure you don't miss it, go subscribe or follow for free on the Lockdown Chargers YouTube channel and listen wherever you get your podcast from. You can also find the show every day on all of our social media. Find clips like the Austin Eckler interview. You can find us on, on X at Lockdown LAC, me at Dan Talk Sports, and David Drogemeyer at Dro Talk SD, as well as the show's Instagram page at Lockdown Chargers and our Lockdown Chargers Facebook page. But get it done, Chargers. You can do it. Be back here for the postgame show on Sunday, guys. But until then, take it easy and go Bolts.